Hello everyone and welcome to the longest and most complicated guide I have ever done on Baron Nashor. So basically Baron Nashor is very complex, much more than you think, and I will try my best to make you understand every single thing there is to know about him. First I need to make a disclaimer that some information might become outdated sooner or later because the developers confirmed that they are trying to rework the Baron a little bit because they do not like some aspects of it. Okay, so now let me tell you that I bet that 99% of you will not know everything in this guide. And I have three arguments to back this up. The first one is that I was not able to find a single complete Baron Nashor guide that is as deep as the one I'm making right now. My second argument is that he is very different from PC Baron, so if you watched any guide or if you read the League of Legends wiki about Baron Nashor, what you learned is not entirely correct and even completely wrong. And finally, before making this recording, I have sent my guide to Dooms, the World Rift coach for Team Rix, and he told me that he learned some stuff, which made me very happy, and that he found it very useful in a competitive perspective. So for all of these reasons, if you want to know everything about Baron Nashor, such as how to kill Baron without taking a single HP of damage, keep watching this guide. Let's get started. So before I explain to you the Baron abilities and what they do, how they work, etc., I need to talk about four basic facts that you must know about Baron Nashor. The first fact is Every single hit you take from Baron Nashor will inflict a poison. This poison is actually the single reason why this is all so complicated, so I will get back to it later in the video. It will also be the key to learn how to take no damage when taking Baron, so stay tuned. The second fact is that every single time Baron Nashor hits you, you will lose 3 armor and 3 magic resistance for 5 seconds, and each time he hits you again, the countdown is reset, so it's 5 seconds again, and it will stack until you lose 50 armor and 50 magic resistance in total. So when you are doing Baron Nashor, you are losing armor every time you take damage from him and you are getting at a disadvantage compared to the enemy team if they come and fight you. The third fact is that Baron Nashor will always use his abilities in the same order. So I'm gonna teach you how to predict what ability come next and how we can abuse this system to minimize the damage we take from Baron. And finally, depending on whether the closest player to Baron is standing in front of him or behind him, he will not use the same abilities, and again, this will be very useful next. By the way, I have a Discord server, so if you want to help me record videos or send me some tips and tricks, you can just join it. See you! So, now for the most complicated part of this guide, I will explain each and every Baron ability and auto-attack effects in order. So, first, I'm gonna talk about when a player engages Baron from the front. When he gets engaged, he will always start with the Acid Pool ability on the closest player. So he will shoot 3 pools of Acid that deal AP damage and slow you for 1 second. This is not a very threatening ability because it does not deal a lot of damage. The biggest threat is that you can get the poison on your entire team at once, which you obviously want to avoid. After he has used the Acid Pool ability, he will start auto-attacking, and this is a crucial part of this guide. So let me explain the Baron Nashor auto attacks. He will always target the closest player to him and this will be the main target. The auto attacks will be indicated by a big green projectile and will deal AD damage only, but of course, because you get poisoned, you also receive some AP damage. This auto attack on the closest player will also apply the Baron debuff to them. This debuff is called Baron's Gaze and it will make the player deal 50% less damage to Baron, which is huge. And I told you the closest player to Baron is the main target, but the auto attacks will also have a secondary target with every single shot. So every single time Baron Nashor auto attacks, there will be the main green projectile, but also a secondary smaller projectile that will only inflict the poison and not deal damage directly. The secondary target is chosen as random. So if there are more than two players, player A will receive the auto attacks, 
player B and C will receive the poison at random. But in fact, Baron Nashor always tries to apply the poison to as many players as possible. So if there are 10 players standing in the Baron pit, he will target a different player as the secondary target with each auto attack. After Baron has auto attacked 6 times in a row, he will stop to use the missiles spell. This spell will fire 5 projectiles that fall from the sky on one or multiple players. If there are more than one player in the Baron pit, the other projectiles will hit other players at random. This ability deals high damage and is AOE, so you must avoid it at all costs and you must not stand on top of your allies or else multiple people will take damage from a single projectile which you absolutely want to avoid. And it is quite easy to avoid, you just need to move a little bit out of the way, so yeah, it's not a very threatening ability if you are able to move. After using this ability, Baron Nashor will use 5 more auto attacks and then he will stop to use the tentacle knockup. This spell will always target the closest player and it will knock players up in a small zone. Then Baron Dashor will use 5 more auto attacks, then use the acid pool ability like at the beginning, and then the attack cycle will loop from the start. So it will always be acid pool, missiles, tentacle knockup, acid pool, missiles, tentacle knockup, etc. Now let's see what happens when the closest player to Baron attacks him from the back. The first spell Baron will use will always be the Wall of Spikes ability. So there will be spikes that come out of the ground in the entire back area of the Baron pit and every single player hit will get stunned for one second. Then after the first spell, like we said before, he will use auto attacks. These will look a little bit different because instead of being a green projectile, there will be spikes coming from the ground, but they have the exact same effect as the auto attacks I spoke about before. Then, after the five first auto attacks, he will use the tentacle knockup, which I already spoke before. And then, after five more auto attacks, he will use the wall of spikes again, and the cycle will loop. So when the closest player to Baron is behind him, he will only use two abilities. First, the wall of spike, then the tentacle knockup. Something we need to note right now when I am speaking about attacking Baron from behind is you do not deal less damage to Baron when you attack him from behind and you do not take more damage either. I tested it. So in conclusion for the Baron attacks, you must leave space between you and your teammates so multiple people don't get hit by the same ability. You must never let the damage dealers of your team get auto-attacked by Baron, or else they will have the Baron debuff and you never want this to happen. And finally, you need to keep track of the auto-attacks so you know when Baron will use the tentacle knockup so you can avoid being stunned and knocked up. Now let me explain what I think is the most important part of this guide and it is the Baron Poison. Because I spoke about the fact that every single time you take damage from Baron, you will get the poison reapplied to you. But now let me explain the effects. So each time you get hit, you will see that you have a green particle effect around you, meaning that you have the poison applied. This will last 5 seconds and every single time you take damage from Baron, the timer is reset to 5 seconds. So unless you stop taking damage from Baron, the poison lasts forever. So the effect of this poison is that you take AP damage every second as long as you are standing inside the Baron pit, which is the yellow zone that you can see around the Baron. If you have the poison effect and you leave this yellow zone, you will stop taking damage instantly. But if you still have the poison effect on you and you get back inside the zone, you will start taking damage every second again. Now there is one thing I didn't explain to you when I was explaining the auto attacks and it is that if you are not the main target of the auto attacks but you are a secondary target, you will get hit by the poison except if Baron doesn't have a direct line of sight on you. So maybe now you guessed it, but there is a way to never get the poison applied to you, which means that if you avoid all the Baron spells, you will literally take zero damage for the entire duration of the fight. So of course, the safe spots are behind the walls on the left and right of the Baron pit. If you stand in these spots, which I call the safe spots, you will never ever become the secondary target of the poison. Meaning, if you avoid the missiles falling from the sky, you will never 
take any damage from Baron. And this blew my mind when I found this out because if your tank can survive, you will not take any damage if you stand inside the safe spot. Like, this is insane. So as you can see on the screen right now, I am taking Baron with literally like no HPs and I will not take any damage during the entire phase. If I get targeted by the missiles, I move out of the way for one second, I get back in and I keep attacking. It's that simple. And if you paid attention before, you will remember that when the closest player to Baron is standing behind him, he will never use the missile ability and the tentacle knockup only targets the closest player. So if you are a tank, and you want to do Baron Nashor and minimize the amount of damage your team is gonna take, stand behind Baron and they will literally take no damage ever if they are standing far enough. And if they stand inside the safe spot, they will never get the poison applied to them. They will never get auto attacked. They will never take a single HP of damage. Your team will not lose magic resistance, will not lose armor, will not lose HP. This is insane. Now, sadly, I expect this to be something that changes once they rework the Baron, but until then, keep this very very good trick in mind because it's so good. Woo. <laughs> That's the first time I make a, a guide this long and I have to speak in English for so long, I'm getting tired. Uh, so now we have killed Baron, we have the Baron buff. So let me explain how the Baron buff works. When you kill Baron, you gain the Hand of Baron or Baron buff, which gives you bonus AP, AD, as well as some armor and magic resistance. The buff will last for two minutes, and if you die, you lose it instantly. Just like when you have the Rift Herald, recalling will take half the time, so instead of five seconds, you will recall in 2.5 seconds. Of course, the most important part is that when you have the buff and you get close to your minions, they will become stronger. You will see that they are buffed because they become purple, they become a little bit faster, a little bigger. And the most important part, of course, is that they take less damage and they deal more damage. And one thing I learned when making this guide, thanks to Mohamdi, is that when the cannon minions are buffed, they deal damage in a zone. So the projectiles that they shoot, instead of just hitting one target and damaging that, it will explode and deal damage in a small zone. And if they attack a turret, it will deal damage around the turret. But something you might not know, and this is a good advice I have to give you, when Baron spawns at 13 minutes, he has 11,200 HPs. Then every minute, so at 13 minutes, 14 minutes, 15 minutes, etc., he will gain 400 HPs. And he will keep gaining HPs every minute until he reaches 16,000 HPs, which is the cap, and he will never have more HPs than that. But there is one thing that is not capped, and it is the Baron buff. Every single minute, the buff that Baron gives becomes better. Just as a mean of visualization, I will not use numbers, but I will show you that this is how much AD, AP, armor, and magic resistance you get at 13 minutes when you kill Baron, and this is how much you get at 20 and 30 minutes. And it's like insane. It's like an insane amount of damage and magic resistance and armor. Like it's crazy strong. And my advice is imagine you are doing Baron at 15 minutes and 57 seconds and you are gonna kill him. Wait until you reach 16 minutes because once you reach 16 minutes, the Baron buff becomes stronger. So if you can afford to wait three more seconds, you will get a better buff for the next two minutes. So it's totally worth it. So in conclusion, Baron becomes stronger every minute his buff becomes stronger as well. And if you can kill Baron at a minute mark instead of just before a minute mark, you should definitely do it so you get a better buff. Now the guide is almost over, but I still have some Baron facts that did not really fit in the other categories. So I will tell you them all right now. The first one is that Baron is immune to all forms of crowd control. So you cannot stun him, you cannot slow him, you cannot charm him, you cannot do anything to him except damage. But of course, if your ability stuns but also deals damage, you can use this ability on Baron. He will not get stunned, but he will still take the damage. Baron will turn his head to look at you, even if you are invisible, but sadly other players will see the Baron looking at them, not looking at the closest player or whatever. So this is actually useless, <laughs> sadly. 
some champions can solo the Baron, like Master Yi, Amumu, or Rengar, and a few other ones. And I think the developers are trying to get rid of this, so it is actually impossible to kill the Baron alone. So this will surely change in the future. If players are standing where the Baron is going to spawn, they will get knocked up and pushed to the side. And because when you are knocked up, you are airborne, Yasuo can ult you off of this. And finally, when you kill Baron Nashor, you get 200 gold. And if you have the Mastermind rune, you will get 240 gold. And that's it. That's everything there is to know about Baron Nashor in Wild Rift. So if you enjoyed the guide, please leave me a comment because I really like reading comments and I will reply to all of them. And if you want to speak to me on a daily basis, share some tips and tricks or help me record videos, you can join my Discord server. The link will be down below. I hope you enjoyed. See you next time and good luck for your next match.